If you had told me 10 years ago that Donald Trump would become president of the United States and have a good chance of being reelected, despite the fact that he's uh, been indicted for 91 crimes, um, I would have told you you were crazy. I thought that was, you know, and most people would have, would have laughed at that suggestion. I would prepare, and I, I think the most dangerous thing that could happen for the whole world would be for Trump to be elected. Let's look at a little bit at what happened. I think um, we have forgotten what happened in 1991 and where the left was in 1991. The collapse of real existing socialism could have opened a lot of other possibilities and people were talking about them in the early 90s. People were talking about a Cold War dividend that instead of spending all of this money on, on uh, you know, horrific amounts of money on, on weapons, mm -hmm. um, we might have created a system of social rights for the entire world. I mean, Malala, this is one of my favorite little facts, I put it in the book, I think. Sure. Malala has calculated that you could give 12 years of a good education to every child on the planet on, on the basis of the profits made by the arms industry in eight days. Eight yeah. days every year. It's just an incredible figure, okay? So after the, col the end of the Cold War, people were talking about all of the things that one could do with the money that the military-industrial complex was uh, taking up. And very quickly, uh, moving into the 90s, you had a movement of finance, of um, politics, but also popular culture, interestingly enough, that we're yeah. all working together to say, eh, eh, any form of socialism leads to the gulag. There is no other opportunity, uh, there is no other option than global neoliberalism. And, and unfortunately, things have only gotten worse since October 7th. I um, tried in Germany, uh, in the media and in public speaking, yeah. to be a voice of reason and to say, look, you know, in a certain sense, Joe Biden, not my favorite <laughs> politician, <laughs> okay. but Joe Biden actually said the right thing when he went to Israel that week. And it was quite significant because um, U.S. presidents do not normally criticize recent U.S. Yeah. policy uh, on foreign soil. I mean, it was a big deal that people missed. He said, look, I understand your rage, uh, but don't do what we did after 9-11, okay? Yeah, I remember. And yeah, I'm glad you remember because a lot of people have forgotten it. And that was exactly the right thing. That is to say, look, um, one can both be horrified, as m most of the world was, at the uh, attacks of September 11th by Al-Qaeda, and still be equally horrified by what Bush's troops did in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. There's, you know, there's no reason not to say these are both war crimes. Yeah. And it, it seemed to be so obvious and so reasonable. And then suddenly you got this uh, woke decision that it's all about teams. I have said, I have probably 200 times, I said that yesterday, so 201 times, but it's probably more. I'm not pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian. This is not a football game. I'm pro-human rights. And every time I say that, somebody says, yes, of course, you're right. Um, and we should stop talking that way. And then they go on to talk that way. They yeah. say, well, it's easier. You know? And, and talking that way uh, just reinforces the idea that it's a decision of whose team you're on. And I don't know if you've seen them in Spain. In the U.S. there have been videos of people at demonstrations who are asked, well, when you shout from the river to the sea, what river and what sea are you talking about? So um, 
Whenever a journalist asks me what I think is going to happen, I say, um, No, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I don't want to ask you that. No, no, I didn't say I'm, 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 not a I'm not a prophet, I'm a philosopher. Um, but I can tell you something about the current German government that, um, that is connected with the woke. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm extremely worried. The polls are not good. The right is rising. This government has been a disaster. But this government has not only been a disaster because sh Schultz is not the world's most um, talented politician. That's all I'll say. I mean, one reason why the far re right is rising in uh, in Germany is their right to say that uh, you know the uh, the elites are arguing about gender pronouns and there are plenty of women in the East who cannot pay their rent from their pensions, okay? Yeah. So what are they supposed to do with a gender pronoun? So you could, you really could have established a lot more social justice had it not been for the libertarians who have, you know, just made it impossible to put a lot of uh, reforms. Well, and if I can ask you, the, the last question is about Biden, because I know that many Democrats are, are asking him to, to leave to, and to, to keep the path, the path free for another candidate to beat Trump, that is the priority one and the only one priority right now. Do you think that would be a, a good uh, move? So many people think it would be a good move, since democratic elections are about majority votes, that I now think it would be a good move too. The problem is, you know, the majority does feel it would be a good idea. The problem is about who would take his place. And the fear is that Kamala Harris would do worse than Biden. So there's now talk about a brokered convention. Um, I had a friend who was a very well connected friend who was predicting that this was all going to be decided and he would retire by Thanksgiving. It has not happened. Um, but again, I, uh, I would prepare, and I, I think the most dangerous thing that could happen for the whole world would be for Trump to be elected. And I, I think Biden has been an okay president on domestic poli policy. Uh, not on foreign policy, by the way. I think he's still, uh, you know, his foreign policy decisions are very, very cold. I mean, they were formed back in the 70s. Um, mm -hmm. And both his policies towards uh, Russia, China, uh, and India, um, and his policies towards Israel are, you know, are, they, they sort of stayed in place <laughs> from yeah. a long time ago. So I, 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 I'm not happy with his foreign policy. His domestic policy has been pretty good. Um, but it doesn't matter. What matters right now is public perception of um, who can win and, and whether he can. Uh, some people have been saying in the States uh, he could continue to be president but he couldn't survive a campaign of running for yeah. president. Uh, I'm not sure I could survive, and I'm a <laughs> quite a bit younger than Biden, and I'm not sure I could survive. I could not do that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it takes a special kind of temperament, but yeah. So we, we shall see. Um, we shall see. But I think it would be a good idea at this point. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Awesome.